Are you looking to grow your smart home but wondering what to do? I'm going to show you 13 smart home gadgets that I use every single day. These are devices that save me time, money, and help me become more productive. Let's do this. Chances are you have a lot going on. By automating tasks around your home that were previously manual, you can help get back some of your limited time and put them toward other things that you'd rather be doing. Enjoying your hobbies, spending time with family or friends, or just doing your job. Let's dive right into 13 smart home devices that I use every day to do just that. You can find a link for each of these in the video description. Let's kick it off with one of the more unique devices on this list, one that I haven't seen anyone else talk about. This is the Aquanta water heater sensor. It works with both electric and gas water heaters. I'm using it on a gas water heater. Installation was super simple. You attach the hot temperature sensor to the temperature pressure and relief valve and the cold temperature sensor to the cold water inlet. The sensors connect to a Quanta, a small blue box that sits atop the water heater. My gas water heater is power vented. So the power vent plugs into the Aquanta and the Aquanta plugs into the wall outlet. From the Aquanta app, you can see how much hot water is available, the current water temperature, you can see your energy consumption by day, week, or month. You can boost the water heater for more instant heat, especially if you have guests over, and you can set the Aquanta to away mode to save energy. Within the app, you have four different control modes to choose from, including Aquanta intelligence, time of use, manual, or temperature control. I use this to monitor and lower our energy consumption, boost the hot water if we have guests over, and set it to away mode to save energy. Staying on the topic of energy, I'm using several smart plugs with built-in energy monitoring. I'm using the TP-Link Casa smart plug, but you could use another brand if you wish, so long as it has energy monitoring. But these little devices provide far more utility than knowing the energy consumption. I've got one plugged in to my smart TV and another plugged in to my washing machine. This unlocks the ability to create smart home automations based on the state of the device. For example, I have a smart light in the basement that automatically turns on when motion is detected, but I don't want the light turning on if we're watching TV. By using the smart plug with energy monitoring, I'm able to know if the TV is on based upon how much energy is flowing through the smart plug. This allows me to create a condition in my home automation that says, do not turn on that basement light if someone is watching the TV. Likewise, I use the smart plug in a washing machine automation that will send me a push notification to my phone and announce on our Echo devices that the washing machine is done. If you're interested in automating your laundry, you can check out my other video on that. If you really want to save money on energy, look no further than a smart thermostat. I'm using the Honeywell Home T5 smart thermostat. You could use another one so long as it's smart. This allows me to not only set the HVAC mode remotely, but also create automations that are tuned to our behavior. If someone opens a window or door, then it will automatically pause the thermostat so we don't waste money on energy while the outside air is flowing in. If nobody is home and the thermostat is on, I get a push notification asking if I'd like to turn off the thermostat. Likewise, if my wife or I are headed home from work, it will automatically turn on the thermostat to the last save state, that way the home is comfortable by the time that we arrive home. I have another video just on smart home automations for energy, if that's something that you're interested in. To create automations like I did for my thermostat, you need reliable presence detection. Presence detection is really the lifeblood of my smart home. So many of my automations depend on knowing who is home and who is away. To achieve this, I'm using the Everything Presence One sensor. This little device packs a lot of sensors inside, such as temperature, brightness, humidity, motion, and millimeter wave. The millimeter wave sensor is the key one, as that allows me to know reliably if someone is in a room. I've got four of these devices around my home, and I can't imagine my smart home without them. If you want to know more about how I use presence detection with this sensor, you can see my video just on that topic. 
When we're not at home or when we're sleeping, we use Ring Alarm and Ring contact sensors for peace of mind. With Ring Alarm integrated into our smart home, I can get push notifications on my phone asking me if I'd like to arm the alarm when everyone is away and the alarm hasn't been set yet, or same a notification asking if I want to disarm the alarm upon arriving back home. Ring contact sensors not only provide an element of security on doors and windows, but also open up other smart home automation use cases, like turning on the porch lights when the back door is opened in the evening, or pausing the HVAC when a door or window is opened, like in the example that I shared earlier. I like that Ring Alarm has cellular data backup if the power goes out, and we have 24-7 professional monitoring. For additional security, I'm using Ubiquiti Unify Protect cameras around my home. A particular favorite is the Unify G4 doorbell at my front door. Not only is the image sharp and quick to load, but of course I can integrate it in automations, like sending me a push notification if a person is detected at the front door, including a real-time image snapshot to see who it is. I'm also able to tailor the audible doorbell chime to have it only ring when it's outside the typical hours that someone might be sleeping. On the front door itself, I have the Yale Assure 2 Z-Wave Smart Lock. I have several smart locks around my home, but this one is a particular favorite. The design is attractive, and because it uses Z-Wave, it's super reliable. Of course, you can enter a PIN code to enter the home, so no key needed. But I use it in automations, like automatically locking the door if it's been left unlocked for a certain time interval, or auto-unlocking the door upon arriving back home. If you're looking at smart locks and you aren't sure what to get, I'll leave a link to my video on that. Moving to the largest door of the house, I'm using the RAT GDO Wi-Fi control board to make my garage door smart. It hooks up to my existing garage door opener and allows me to seamlessly manage my garage door from my phone or via smart home automations. I even have a widget on my iPhone lock screen where I can just click to open or close the garage door. Super convenient. Automations ensure that my garage door is never left open by accident. If you're interested in learning more about this, I'll leave a link to my video on this topic. No smart home would be complete without smart lighting. I've tried tons of different smart bulbs and smart switches over the years. My go-to favorite combination is pairing a Philips Hue smart bulb with a Lutron Aurora smart dimmer switch. This allows me to adjust the room's ambiance from cool lights during the day to warm lights in the evening, or even colored lights for a festive occasion while still having the convenience of a wall switch. I connect these lights to my smart home, which dynamically adjusts the brightness and color temperature of my lights depending on the sun's position in the sky. This way, I don't have to fiddle with an app in order to adjust the brightness or the color temperature depending on the time of day. It just synchronizes all of my lights to the right brightness and the right color temperature for maximum comfort in my home. I love this. If you're interested in this lighting setup, see my separate video on Philips Hue. There are a few use cases where having a smart switch is just more practical, like controlling a bunch of secondary ceiling lights all at once. For this, I'm using Lutron Caseta. Like Philips Hue, Lutron Caseta offers unbeatable reliability. They just always work. If you want to learn more about smart bulbs versus smart switches, be sure to check out my other video on that. For controlling just about any light or to trigger an automation, I'm using the Akara Wireless Mini Switch. It's a tiny battery operated button that you can place just about anywhere. In one room, I'm using it to turn TP-Link Casa lights on and off. In another room, I use it to trigger a nighttime automation in my kid's bedroom. When I press the button, it turns off all their lights and turns on the white noise machine and the baby monitor. For more creative home automations, I'm using the AOTech multi-purpose sensor. This sensor packs in temperature, vibration, moving, and open and close sensors. You can really get creative with this. My favorite use case is as a vibration sensor on my dryer. This way I can have an automation that sends me a push notification when the dryer cycle has completed, similar to the washing machine example that I shared earlier. I suppose it wouldn't be a smart home without a robot vacuum. I'm using the iRobot Roomba i7 Plus. If you have kids and if they eat food, 
The floor under our kitchen counter is a garbage dump after snacks or meals. Roomba stays busy tackling this nightmare. Since the i7 Plus has smart mapping, I can tell Amazon's voice assistant to have Roomba go and vacuum under the kitchen counter and then order and sanity is restored. I've only scratched the surface of how I'm using smart home gadgets to save me time and money and make my home more comfortable and secure. Let me know in the comments which of these you're interested in or which smart home gadgets you use every day. If you're interested in how tech can make you more productive, hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you in the next one.